Hi there, uh, Linda, Trevor. Hi, Thank you very morning. much for joining us um, and uh, telling us a little bit about uh, what you're seeing around the world and what it is that you're doing. Um, perhaps you could uh, start off by telling us just a little bit about who you are, uh, the ministry you're involved in and your connection uh, with Winchester Vineyard. We're Brits who've been, who were living in New Zealand for quite a while and we came back having... Um, experienced with another ministry of God loving us as his as our father and we came back here maybe seven, seven eight years eight, ago. oh dear eight years ago and so we're still based now northern hemisphere although we still do head south um all our children are married and live or two of them live in um New Zealand and one lives in Australia which is why we try to be away for most of the British winter. Mm, very, very wise. The thing was that when we went to New Zealand, we had an encounter with God as a father. Now, I've been a pastor for years, done church and everything. And if you'd asked me, oh, you know, 20 years ago, what, what do you know about God the Father? I'd think, well, what sort of question is that? Everyone knows God's a father. What I discovered was I didn't know him as intimately as he wants to know me. Mm -hmm. And so we got involved in a um a Christian ministry based down in New Zealand called Father Heart Ministries, led by a couple called James and Denise Jordan. And long story short, we ended up working with them for a number of years until they retired back in about 2020, and the ministry shifted in its focus. And a number of us who had been involved began to um, be based in different locations, not New Zealand, etc. And we were in that situation. So we've continued um working connection with father heart uk which is an, an english expression of the father heart teaching and revelation and we continue to do that working with churches and groups and and so we call this slot god around the world um yeah talking about what, what god's doing uh in in foreign places uh, and it'd be fascinating to hear about some of the places you've been recently overseas and what you've seen god doing there well i mean most recently a couple of weeks ago we were in south africa and i did two weekend conferences both connected with vineyard churches which was interesting one in cape town and one in durban and um huge enthusiasm from the local churches and people coming in partly because they recognize how fatherless their nation is now mm -hmm. the fatherless issue is worldwide nearly every nation we go to people say oh we're the most fatherless nation on the planet well everybody's saying that and so there's a real um understanding that that they need to know god as a father at a very intimate heart level um back in january i had the privilege of going to cambodia uh, i flew up there from new zealand as you, as do. you do um and had a week there with um uh, it's a ministry an ngo that's been based in cambodia since the end of the communist era and the when the killing fields you may recall that was a historical mm -hmm. event they've been involved in there for 35 years working with orphans and survivors of the killing fields well now they are all adults and grown up mm -hmm. and these people are now church planters into rural areas and so this we had about 35 of their key leaders come together for a week um responsible for provinces hundreds of cell churches and rural churches and communities across the country and i i mean to be really honest i think it's probably one of the most significant things i've ever done mm. uh, to actually you know you the, the the openness of their hearts given that they were so broken from their experience was extraordinary i even actually held in my arms a guy who had been a khmer rouge soldier who had been involved in the the killing fields and is now a born again believer and leading a network of about 25 churches in one of the provinces and he just he just sobbed on my shoulder as he realized that in all of it god had been a father to him even though his natural father was gone and mm -hmm. you know so that that's kind of like 
What helps me get out of bed in the morning? I think you might need to say about Uganda because that's another one you go yeah. that you feel significant. Yeah, I mean, coming up in August, I'm over to Uganda again. I've been going there for about 12, 15 years, working with a a place that's based in Jinja on the mm. Nile. Um, it's actually a place where Karis kids have sent their staff for retreats, you know, Karis kids that are linked with the church, um, and their staff often go there for retreat times. But I, I'm going there primarily to work with um, young adults who are – um, heading up their ministry to young people. Mm. The, the young people that come there for three weeks at a time um, are mostly ex-street kids, ex-child soldiers, ex-prostitutes, kids that have had nothing and no Christian background whatsoever. I'm, I'm there again in, in August for uh, two weeks doing some really foundational stuff with them. Th these guys... Mm don't know one end of the Bible to the other. They've encountered God. They know he's their father. They know Bible verses and they kind of, they, they float. But so I've got two, two weeks to help ground them a little bit in how all this fits together and um, particularly how it all paints a huge picture of what God's doing in the world. So that, that sort of thing inspires me and mm -hmm. excites me a lot. Oh, that's that's absolutely brilliant. And, um, you know, so you're going off to these quite challenging environments in many cases. I'm sure some of the European countries you go to are also quite challenging in their own right. Uh, and and you, you're part of you're part of our family here. How can we be praying for you? Well, we, we've had a connection with Winvin for, for years on, on very much on the fringe. Um, Even but, when we were living in New Zealand. So yeah, that's going I mean, back, going back plus years. to the days when... Um, you and Ginny were leading it. It was a loose connection, but our main connections with our neighbours, Edward and Catherine Law, who have been absolutely superb in supporting us and in giving us a place mm. to live when we're back, which has been marvellous. So just knowing that when we come home, walking in the door and people saying, how are you? Lovely to see you without having to explain where we've been, what we're doing, who we are. Is this your first time? Well, it's great that people watch that. But, I mean, we, we were there Sunday. Um, that's last Sunday, whatever day that was. First time we've been there for over four months because of the trip south. And have so many people between the door and our seat. Yeah, it was just lovely. greet us and let us know they've been thinking about and praying for us. It was just mm. marvellous. Mm. So we value heart connection with people as much as anything. Mm. And so if people are praying for us, we, we have a, a website where I put our itinerary on it. And um, that's trevorandlinda.uk, um, which has got all of our comings and goings on it. It's got our financial needs, which, you know, to be honest, Uganda, Cambodia, they don't pay for themselves. I have to fund those. And, and we've been incredibly blessed by people. Um, supporting us, encouraging us financially as well. So that's kind of partly how it works. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, and thank you so much for sharing with us. I think we're all richer uh, by being able to share in what you're doing. Um, and uh, yeah, we will continue to pray for you and continue to look out for you when you're there on a Sunday. <laughs>